Hello, this applications generation topic has quite a lot of technical information to cover. However, this particular video isn't really that technical. We're looking at different examples of application software. And it feels a little bit like this has slipped into a level of computer science by mistake, but we've got to know just a few examples of applications and what they're used for. So I showed you this diagram in the previous topic where we're looking more at system software. Well, application software is one of our two main types of software. Unlike system software, which is more for looking after the computer, application software is looking after the user. It's there to directly aid the end user. And perhaps a more useful way of thinking about that is application software performs tasks that could be done without a computer. So we are using applications to try and aid us. The computer is hopefully giving us benefits, but I could do all of these tasks without the computer. Whereas system software needs the computer to be able to even exist. So let me give you some examples of applications and their purposes. This is not a difficult topic, but people often mess it up by not bothering to learn it or using the incorrect terms. So please don't be lazy when it comes to this, despite it being not as hard as some of the other stuff. One of the most common examples of someone messing up this topic is by using a brand name like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. We need to use the generic terms like word processor or presentation software. So our processes, their purpose is for creating written documents. We are thinking about things like Microsoft Word here. They have got loads of tools to make formatting more professional. The formatting is how it appears on screen. Presentation software is used for creating slideshows or of course, presentations. And to try and make this more professional, they have animation and design tools built in to make it a little bit more engaging. Like I'm showing you right now, there are colors, there are fades and transitions makes it look a little bit better than if it was just a plain colorless presentation. And of course you could produce a written document or a presentation without these programs. And that's why they're application software, not system software. I don't need a computer to do a presentation, but it hopefully helps me. People often mix up the purpose of spreadsheet software and database software. The proper term for database software is DBMS. That is short for database management system. It's a program which lets us add stuff to a database, access stuff from a database. The database itself is just a big collection of tables. So we need a DBMS to do anything with it. The purpose of spreadsheet software is more for analyzing and presenting data. It will store lots of data, but the key purpose is to do that analysis through things like calculations, with formulas and stuff like that. You can also create graphs to present the data in a more visually appealing format. Whereas a database is there more just to store data long term and later search for it. And the DBMS will provide tools to hopefully efficiently access what could be a huge amount of data. We might use SQL queries to be able to interact with it via the DBMS. And we'll look at SQL later in the course. There are a fair few different brands for DBMS. This one is Microsoft Access, but there are others all look quite plain because the main purpose is just to hold the data and then do some searching based on it. And the last two, I think it's worth you knowing because you could talk about these in exam questions are more creative uses of application software. So image editors, we're thinking things like Photoshop are there to modify images. Images can be photos, but they could also be cartoonish graphics or logos or things like that. And there are a huge number of modifications you can do. So just some examples are cropping the size of your image, adjusting the colors, or perhaps removing the backgrounds can do all of that within a program like Photoshop. Just don't forget that you can't use the word Photoshop. You've got to use the generic term image editor. And lastly, DTP software you may not have really heard of or used before. This is used again in the creative industry for combining text and images together in a more professional way. And we're thinking about things like magazines, leaflets, business cards, textbooks will get created in desktop publishing software because image editors are really focused on images only. Word processors are really focused on text only. To be able to do complicated layouts, we often need a third type of software, which is called desktop publishing or DTP for short. So this is much more focused on the layout of your document. It allows you to move stuff around a lot more flexibly and it allows you to keep consistent templates, which can be used across all of your editions of your magazines and things like that. This is Adobe InDesign. There's also Microsoft Publisher as well. They're quite specific tools, but these are used for really professional publications.